Welcome to our Watch and Learn today. So today we're going to talk all about bobbins. Yep. So I'm Kelly Ashton and here with me today is Johnny Barfus. How's it going? And we're going to tell you all about winding your bobbins, what a good wound bobbin looks like. We're going to talk about cleaning the bobbin case area and we're even going to show you on the machine how to set your low bobbin estimator. So, so here we go, Johnny, awesome. get us First started. First up, the bobbin winder. Let's talk about winding your own bobbins. So I have some thread on here. I'm plugged in. I go up through this thread guide here. I come down. This is sometimes called a pigtail. And I want to make sure that we're getting some good angles on there. So we'll, that looks good, right? And I want to make sure everyone knows this angle here is important because it's keeping it in front of the bobbin winder tensioner right there, right? Right. So we want to make sure that thread is feeding down to this side of the bobbin tensioner. Okay, let me get it clear. So the thread mass needs to be directly above the cone of thread yep. for the spool pin, either right. whichever. And then the little thread guide should be kind of to the front yeah, of if this the, is the tension discs. Yeah, I'm just going to say this side. So if you're standing in front of it, it would be to the left. Okay. So this side of it, right? Okay, and, and placement of those two guides are very important. Yes, so we have to get, um, we'll get a call that it's not winding correctly or something. So we want to make sure, that's one of the one things we want to make sure we hit. Or if it's the thread is popping out of the tension disc, then probably that thread guide is not far enough forward or where it's supposed to be, so. Yes. Okay. And tension disc, we talked about that last week with our tension. But again, tension discs are very important. Okay. And I'm going to make sure it's flossed in there. Right. Really flossed right in the middle of that. Yes. Good. Okay. And then our, our um, bobbins have that little slot in there. I like to poke the thread through there. They're called easy, easy, easy. bobbins Yeah. because you can put that thread right up through that slit and hold on to your tail. It's easy if you can see, but if you need your glasses off to see it, there you go, it's a little easier. Okay. Now I have to put my glasses on to see it. You have to take yours I off. I have to take mine off. I'm <laughs> nearsighted. So we put that on there. I just like to hold a little tail out. And then I hit start. We're at a speed about two or three. Okay. Not too fast. Okay. And I'm just going to hit start. I'm going to hold on to this tail. As it goes, I just hold on to it and that bobbin keeps winding. Okay, but it your tail cut off? Yeah, it does cut okay. off automatically. Okay. Awesome. So can you increase the speed of that bobbin winder? You can. Okay. How much? Some people turn it up to 11, but I'd say we keep it down about five, four to five. Okay. That's what I would recommend. Why, why do you recommend that? Uh, because if you wind it too fast or wind them too full, Uh huh then it can damage your bobbin. Yes, yeah, so, so let's talk about that. So these are aluminum bobbins. We and if, if you touch it part way and you, the bobbin feels hot, stop winding. That's too fast? Yes, it's too fast. Okay, so we got some shots of these bobbins, that, this bobbin that was over full. So she will, uh, Kayla will stick some footage of that in there. So if it's too full, what happens to the bobbin? It gets blown. It is a, we call it blown. Okay. Exploded. Exploded. It actually crushes the core of it and does it, it's useless after that. It's just thrown right. away. Right. Right? So uh, it's also a good idea to kind of put your bobbin on a flat surface like that table and just make sure that it doesn't have any rocking so mm -hmm. that, it, that you haven't um, damaged it by right. warping it. So you can either blow it or warp it if you're winding them too fast and too hot. Yeah. So we have some shots of one that is too full that's blown and then what we want to also make sure that it's not too what we call poofy loose you don't want it to be too spongy okay so and we also have some shots of that so when you are poking it with your finger it's it's somewhat it should be firm. nice and firm it should be firm yep firm we don't not, want it spongy right not spongy mm -hmm. so that's an example of too spongy so you just won't get a really good stitch if you have a spongy bobbin so make sure that you're winding your bobbins correctly we also get calls and they say well it's winding too much on one side so it's filling okay. up one side more than another okay so let's just kind of address how that works i'm just going to unplug it there so you can see this 
That's what this knob here is for. Excellent. Can we get a good shot of that? Okay. So this knob adjusts the, dis the distance of the tension spring this way. So if we were right. standing in front of it back and forth, so this way, so if it's winding too much on the inside, if you're going to want to bring it out just a little bit. Yeah, if it's so winding too it much on the bit, out. Uh -huh. So it's pushing that tensioner out this way. Uh -huh. And you can do it while it's running and see which direction you need to push it. So if, if you see it more on one side, you just adjust that, that dial a little bit and push it out that way. Okay. Right? Okay. So show me the uh, adjustment you would make if it's not winding your bobbin full enough or maybe too full. Oh yes, thank you. So this has a laser guide right here, or a light guide, I don't know if it's a laser. But. Okay. And if, you ha if you're not getting it full enough, you want to adjust the, tent the distance of this here, and you want to make sure this has a vertical line. So this has a vertical line like that, uh -huh. and you can line that up with your bobbin okay. to make sure it gets all the way full. If it's not getting full enough, you just loosen this, push this this way. You can't really see it quite there, but you can adjust the adjust the distance of that black part there. Yeah. This direction. And again, that's a light guide there. And as soon as the thread hits that, it'll shut off, shut it off. So it's an auto shut off. Okay. We so call that auto fill. Perfect. And we're not going to run into a problem if we don't fill it full enough. We just don't get enough thread on our bottom. Yeah, you want to fill that thing all the yeah, way so but you're if you stitching fill it, as long as possible, right? Right. If you fill it too full, it's not going to seat correctly into your bobbin case. So it is, you know, and they have been set before they come to you. But if for some reason you need to make some adjustments, Johnny just showed you where those adjustments are made. So. Yeah. So does good. that get everything on the bobbin winder? Yeah, that's great. That's okay. a good explanation. So let's talk pre-wound bobbins. I love pre-wound bobbins. I mean, I think so they're I. a godsend, literally. They're so magical. Uh, saves you a lot of time, a lot of effort. These come with a, I brought a few out, this different one, so. This comes with cardboard on there. Can I take the cardboard off, Kelly? You bet, the cardboard was put on there for transportation to keep them nice and well wound for right. transportation. But right. we live in Utah and we don't have a lot of humidity. So I leave my cardboard on unless it's creating a problem. Like if it's not dropping smoothly or, uh -huh. or it's just I don't have a smooth pull, then I'll take the cardboard off. But yeah. otherwise here where we're dry, I just leave it on. But same. Why, why I say we're not humid is because humidity can affect cardboard. It can expand it, um, even too much oil on your cardboard can expand it. Yes, and on your bobbin. Let's yeah. talk about that really quick. Yeah. So we do get a call occasionally that I just I just changed my bobbin and I checked my tension before and now it's out for a bit and then it went back to normal. So I actually talked to one of our engineers, Glenn, and he explained the physics behind it. So if you put too much oil in your bobbin area, that oil can be absorbed into the thread by the thread of your bobbin, uh -huh. that causes your bobbin to expand, that throws off your tension. You stitch for six, eight inches, 10 inches, that thread goes away, your bobbin contracts again, your tension goes back to normal, right? Uh -huh. So I love the way that Glenn explained yeah. that because it's an easy fix. And when you oil, uh, Kelly's gonna show us how to oil in a minute, but I always tell people just a half a drop, and that sounds silly, but you just need the slightest amount in there usually. And yeah. if you get a little too much, just wipe it out and then just stitch a little bit on the side to make sure you mop that up. Right. So I out. like to just squeeze the oil and I'll talk about it when I'm She's doing it. She's going to talk it, about it in a second. So. Yeah, just a tiny bit. But that's one thing that, you can, that can cause a problem with your tension and your bobbin is a little bit too much oil causing that bobbin to expand, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And I just brought these, these pre-wounds. I was using all these same pre-wounds and I would change the bobbin and all of a sudden my tension would go crazy and it was because that pre-wound was actually too big and I didn't notice it. So I had to wind it onto another bobbin, but. So, so I use pre-wound all the time and I have the best luck if I'll put the pre-wound in my case and then I pull off a couple of yards. I don't know if they're wound a little too full or if it, what, what exactly it happens, but if I pull off a couple of yards on that pre-wound bobbin, it runs perfectly. Okay. Otherwise I kind of fight it for a minute at first and, and so that's just my recommendation. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, so now let's talk setting bob and tension. Can we talk about just a couple of other pre-wounds for a minute? Oh yeah, yeah, go ahead. Like we talked about the ones with the cardboard. There's also some with a magnetic center. There's some that are just on clear plastic. They, they all work great in a handy quilter machine, but we do recommend that you leave your backlash spring in the bobbin case for every kind of bobbin. Do not remove your backlash spring. Yeah, that's okay? something we see on social media. I see it a lot on in different long arm and Facebook posts that just take out your backlash spring. That's, that's not the case. That's not what Handy Quilter recommends. Please leave it in. If you choose to add like a, one of the bobbin genies or something, that's fine. But, but leave that backlash spring. It's in there for a purpose. Right. So it keeps like, uh, I like to say when you're driving around in a car mm -hmm. really fast and someone slams on the brakes, you kind of have a tendency to, to kind of jerk forward, your head does. Well, when the bobbin is spinning really quickly inside the bobbin case and you put stop, it has a tendency to do the same thing. But that spring in there puts a little extra pressure on it and stops it where it needs to stop. Right. So it's really important that you use that backlash spring all the time. Yeah. Okay. And that is adjustable as well. Those backlash springs we have, there's on some bobbin cases that is adjustable and we won't talk about that right here. But if, if your spring, I always suggest keeping, getting, keeping an extra bobbin case on hand in case your spring loses its spring. So I had one at home and I was working fine. Then also the next day it wasn't working, uh, working and the thread was wrapping up around that post inside where the thread, where the bobbin goes. And it's because my backlash spring had gone bad. So I just got a new bobbin case oh. with a good spring. But, but you don't have to buy, you can order yeah, you a backlash spring. you can order spring a backlash you spring. You don't yeah. have to have an entire case, but it's nice to have too. It's so. nice to have an extra bobbin case on hand. That's We true. always joke because mine happened on a Saturday and I had to call Christina, one of our other educators and borrow hers because she lives mm -hmm. a few miles away, so. Yeah, you always, that's when you have troubles is when you're on a deadline yeah. on a weekend, so. <laughs> Saturday <laughs> nice night to when be the shops prepared. are closed. That's right. Okay, we're good with bobbins, yes. right? Uh -huh. Now bobbin cases. I just want to show how to clean that. Clean. That's the, a great idea. Clean the yeah. spring. So okay. we also have some shots of that. Um, but you just want to be able to stick. A, I just take a post-it note, fold it in half. If you have a piece of paper. Yeah, like a business card a or business card. double piece of paper works a really well bill. for me. Yeah. We don't recommend you use a pin underneath there because a lot of people were springing out, like springing their spring, popping it out. So a piece of paper works really well to slide under there. Right. So I just slide that underneath there and you might see a little lint come out of there. I already did all these on the camera. So hopefully we've got a good shot of lint coming out of there, but just make sure that's clean and that's, that can, hem, that can fool up your tension as well. If you have some piece of lint in there. Yes. Right. Oh yes. Yeah. I've heard stories of people even mm -hmm. purchasing a new machine because they just couldn't get any more tension in their bobbin case. They purchased a new machine? Yes. Wow. And all it was was um, a, a big piece of lint just caught under that tension, that spring in their bobbin case. So keep, keep them clean. Keep them clean. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk setting. I had a, the perfect, okay, there we go. Um, setting our bobbin tension. Okay. You want to put it in there like it's a number nine coming off. So I think of the thread coming off the bobbin as a number nine. Yeah, it's, it's so it clockwise. So it comes off to the top and yes, clockwise. So if you're looking at it like this and you pull on the thread, it spins clockwise. Okay. Then we pull it up through the slot and then through that little spring there. So it comes out of the hole in the top and then we could do what we call the drop test. And we were just talking about this as why we want to use a full bobbin. Right, Kelly? Right. And Kelly went down and talked to one of our engineers. Because um, we, we tell you to do the drop test with a full bobbin because uh, gravity is a factor in the drop test, right? So um, if you have a half full bobbin, it's not quite as heavy as a full bobbin. So it's best to set it. It doesn't imply that your, it, it doesn't mean that your tension is going to change mid bobbin. When your bobbin is seated in your bobbin in the machine, gravity is not an issue, but gravity is something that we use to check it. So it's best checked with a full bobbin. But like I said, that does not mean that you can't use a half bobbin. It can't, doesn't mean that your bobbin is tension is changing 
It just means that this is the best way to start. Right. Is that explain that? Yeah, with a full bobbin. Yes. So when you lift it up, you want this to stand up in your hand, and as you drop your hand down, it just stays standing up. So it's spinning, and it does not leave your hand. It just spins right there in your hand. Right. So that looks pretty good, right? Okay, yeah. We want to feel enough tension that it'll make the bobbin case stand up. Just loose enough, it'll stay there. So I like yes. that. And if you need to adjust it, there's a little, we want to use the bigger screw yes. driver, the bigger the bigger screw on there. Yeah, the small one just holds the spring in place. The bigger one is what adjusts the yeah. tension. So that bigger screw is the one that adjusts the tension. Okay, and if it's too tight, which way do I turn it? Too tight, loose. We want to loosen it. Yeah, it's same with normal things, righty-tidy, lefty-loosey, okay. we say. So if it's too tight, loosen it, and it just needs the smallest tick of a, of a turn. Yeah, I right? say like a, like a second on a clock, like just or a minute, tiny, however you. And sometimes you make just the smallest adjustment and it can throw it all off. So just yeah. make the tiniest adjustment on there. Okay. And if it's too loose, tighten it slightly. And then do, again, do that pull up. You just want to make sure it's standing up in your hand like that and not sliding down too fast. Yeah. So if it doesn't stand up in your hand, tighten it a little bit. If it leaves your hand when you pull up, then loosen it just a little bit. Right. Okay. Okay. We got that setting tension. Now let's move on to cleaning. Yeah. You're going to show us that, right? Right. Well, I'm going to show them, first of all, um, the low bobbin estimator on our machines. So we have, it's called a low bobbin estimator. So it's, it's run differently than like on your domestic machines. So I'm going to go to this, the uh, settings tab, which is the one that looks like a gear. Okay. And now there's lots of different options here, but the one I'm going to use is the one with the bobbin with just a little bit of thread on it. Okay, so when I first put a bobbin in there, what I have to do is measure the units of thread that are on that bobbin. So if I'm gonna put a new bobbin in there, I'm gonna use the bobbin that says plus, and I can tell it, like, let's say it's a 50 weight bobbin. So I'm gonna type in here 50 weight, then I'm gonna push done, and it's gonna come back with the 50 right there. And now when I put my bobbin case in, I want to start recording. So I'm gonna push the red button. And what that's going to do is it's going to, the numbers are gonna go up as I use that thread. And it's going to measure every unit of thread on that bobbin. And then when I run out of thread, I'm gonna to come to this screen and push stop. And it's going to tell me what number. I did that opposite, it was run. Anyway, that's gonna, I'm going to push stop and it's going to tell me the unit the number of the number of units of thread on that bobbin. So, if it was 50 weight thread and it stopped at 200, I'm probably going to take it down to like 190 because I'm not sure how many times I'm going to have to tie off right. start and stop again. So, I like to decrease it just a little bit to leave room for kind of a margin mm -hmm. right there. So then the next time when I want to come and use that same thread I can just push my 50 weight or 60 weight, and my it will. It, this is not set yet, but it'll come up with the number that I set, the 190 or the 195. Mm -hmm. And then when I when I turn it on, then it's going to go down as I use the bobbin. This time I'm not recording, so it's just subtracting numbers as I use it. And then as long as the bobbin is set, it's going to beep at me when I'm near the end of that number. Yeah. Okay. So I think this is a really nice feature to have, especially if you're working like with the Pro Stitcher, because it's no fun to run out of bobbin thread in the middle of kind of a really intense design. So I like to use the low bobbin, bobbin estimator when I'm working right. with something like that. So you need to make sure that it's on. I'm going to go back to the home screen. Here is my low bobbin right there. If I, I'm using the same, it's not responding to my fingers today, I think, because my fingers are cold. <laughs> Does that happen to you? But um, I just push that. If I'm using the exact same thread, I just push it and it'll start over again with the same cycle. If I'm changing threads, and I can put up to like 20 different types of threads in here. Mm -hmm. So, and I don't use that many. Right. I use two or three different types of bobbin threads, but, but then I can just easily choose start again and stop. Make sure your, your alarm is on in the alarm screen. Yeah. And that is the low bobbin estimator. Awesome, thank you so, so much. Okay, so I'm going to show you um, 
when we're cleaning. I'm just going to talk about the bobbin case area a little bit when we're cleaning. And our newer generation machines, the Amara, the Forte, the Infinity, and the Moxie, all have a baffle in the back behind the bobbin case area. So it's like this, this black shield. Yes. Right? Okay, and it keeps the all of the lint from blowing back into the moving parts. You don't want to put that lint in the moving parts of your machine, but these machines were designed that way. If you have any of the other machines, we do not recommend that you use canned air. But <clears throat> I'm going to grab the canned air. So there's a few tricks with canned air. Don't shake. And I didn't know this. Like, who picks up a can and, and wants to shake it? You don't do that with canned air. When you pick it up, just squirt it really quickly to make sure that you get rid of any extra humidity that is in the can. And then we don't want to tip it upside down. We don't want to tip it sideways. We're just going to put it in front of the machine and do a sh few short blasts, okay? And then we're going to put um, some oil. Uh, these machines have lighting in the bobbin case area. It's fantastic that you can see what's happening there. You can also take a brush. It's a high quality nylon brush. You don't want to use a brush that will lose its little fibers inside there, it'll bristle. So make sure you use a high quality nylon brush. Your machine came with one. And you can clean in there as well if you'd like. But be very careful of the wiring that connects the lighting. And it's in the upper left corner right here. So just be careful with that, okay? And now when we put the oil in, reach across here. I'm going to take, whenever you're storing your oil, well, when you open your oil and put this spout on it, it's recommended that you leave the spout out. Don't push it back down inside each time because you're taking uh, lint and debris down inside the oil. The other thing that happens is the oil leaks if, if this nozzle is pushed down inside there. So leave this nozzle out. Just put it in a safe place where it can stand up straight. I recommend putting it like out of direct sunlight. That will kind of yellow it. And then you're just going to put the nozzle right there in the race. And you're going to put one little drop or one little half a drop of oil. If you see the oil dripping off that race, you put way too much. So make yeah. sure that you take um, extra batting or fabric or something and clean that off there. You don't want that running onto your fabric. Okay. And then I'm just going to show you how to put the bobbin case in correctly. So it does have that little latch on it, a little lever. And when we take it out of the machine, we use that latch and lever. But we do not use that. We don't pull it out when we're placing the bobbin into the bobbin area. So we're just going to hold it like this. I'm going to set it in there. And I want to push it till I hear that nice snap. Then I know that my bobbin case is seated correctly. Okay. And then once again, when you take it out, you will pull out on that lever to bring the bobbin case out. So make it click. Make it click when that you put a, it in. That was a uh, seat belt advertisement yeah. here locally, I think. Yeah, it was. Make it click. So same thing, make it click in your machine. That was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> but we're about the same age, so yeah. we, we just grew up about. in the same ads. Just about the <laughs> same age. So make sure that you're um, not pulling that lever out when you put your bobbin case in. And, oh, Johnny was talking about the spring. We could, you, you can check your uh, tension, oh, your, yeah, yeah. your backlash spring. But when you set your bobbin in the bobbin case, it should be raised just a little above. Can you, does yours show it very well? No. Okay, it should be raised a little above and you'll feel a little, a little bounce in your bobbin as you push on it. So just one last little tip, okay? Anything else? Oh, this one has a little bounce. Okay. So yeah, you can, I don't know if we can see that on there. Prop. It should be just a little above it. Yeah. Mine's a cardboard one, so it's not as easy to see. It just raises so. slightly above the le that level of the bobbin case. Yeah. And, and then you can see the backlash spring the at work. The backlash spring at so work, yeah. When this is seated in there, it doesn't, it's seated up against something that, yeah, yeah. all those technical terms. It's pushing but it forward. It keeps it pushed forward. Smart engineer figured this all out. It's kind of an amazing process. It is, it's amazing. Yeah. So, okay, there you have it. That's all about bobbins. I hope you feel more confident in your bobbin, the way it works, how to wind it, how to set your low bobbin estimator. Anything else we need to share? I we think go? that's it. Okay. All right. So connect with us on social media. Find us on Instagram or Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. So thank you for joining us today. We'll see you next week with more tips and have some fun quilting.